When we talk about circles, we can also have what's known as a point of tangent. So we're going to take a look at what's known as tangents. Now in trig, tangent, tangent was a trigonometric ratio pertaining to a right triangle. Tangent is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side of a given angle. When it comes to circles, what a tangent is, it's a line that basically intersects the circle at exactly one point, known as point of tangency. A common tangent is a line, ray, or segment that is tangent to two, to two circles at the same time. So here we have circle C with line AB, point of tangency is at point A. Circles F and G, line L, notice those are a common tangent because that line touches or is tangent to circle G and circle F at the same time. Same with the other figure here, the smaller circle F and the larger circle G. Line L is tangent to both F and G, so they have a common tangent. Tangents are pretty straightforward. Basically, it says if a, li a line is tangent if and only if it is perpendicular to a radius drawn to the point of tangency. So notice with circle S, radius is drawn, ST, line L. As long as ST is perpendicular to line L, it is tangent. So line L is tangent to circle S. Due to, I want to change it up a little bit. So ST, so we can say ST is perpendicular to line L. Therefore, line L is tangent. Now, what does it look like mathematically? Well, here we have JL is the radius of circle J. Determine if KL is tangent to circle J, just to find the answer. So here we're given KM is 9, JL is 8, KL is 15. So we know the radius itself is 8. So if JL is 8, that means JM is also 8. Which means K to J is really 17. Now if this is truly tangent... It's going to create a right angle. So if I have a right angle, I can use the Pythagorean theorem here to see if I end up with two equal measures. So again, a squared plus b squared gives me c squared. So a squared and b squared being the two short sides, 8 and 15. So we have 8 squared plus 15 squared is supposed to be equal to our longest side, 17 squared. So all we have to do is 8 squared, so we have 8 squared plus 15 squared, so I get 289. And as long as 17 squared is 289, we're good. Gives me 289. So because we end up with the same thing, it checks out, so KL is tangent to circle J due to KL being perpendicular to JL. So we can use that rationale to say we have a tangent. Again, right angle is created due to the fact that we proved the Pythagorean theorem works in this case. And we can do the same thing with the next circle here. We have JH is tangent to circle G at point J. Find the value of X. So here we already know that we have a tangent. Again, tangent means we have a right angle here. So that means I can use the Pythagorean theorem. Now the short side X and 12, but I need to know the length of the full side, which is really X plus 8. So again, I don't know what X is, so I have to say my longest side is X plus 8. So using the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared gives me c squared, I can plug in the two short sides, x squared plus 12 squared is equal to x plus 8 squared. So x squared is going to remain x squared, 12 squared is 144. Now x plus 8 does not mean x squared plus 8 squared, it really means x plus 8 times x minus 8 or x plus 8 times x plus 8. 
So x squared plus 144, we're going to use distribution, x times x is x squared, x times 8 plus 8x, eight, 8 times x plus 8x, eight, 8 times 8, 64. Combine our like terms, so we end up x squared plus 144 is equal to x squared plus 16x plus 64. Now what I want to do is I want to get this equal to zero, so we're going to sub, we are going to subtract x squared and 144 from both sides. So minus x squared minus 144. So the x squareds are going to cancel out. Same with over there and 144. So we have zero equals 16x. And then 64 minus 144 minus 80. So to solve for x, we add 80 to both sides. And we get 80 equals 16x. Divide by 16. 5 is equal to x. So we found the value of x. So a little lengthy, a little involved, but that's the way we would, that's the way we would do it. So C is going to be the same thing with the two circles that we just did in this particular, in A and B. So we don't really have to go over it. Now, what about tangents where I have point of intersection on the outside of the circle? Well, there is a theorem. So if two segments from the same exterior point are tangent to a circle, then they are congruent. So here we have the same exterior point B, so we got that. As long as they are tangent to a circle, then they are congruent. So as long as segment BA is tangent at point A and BC is tangent at point C, that means they are going to be the same, congruent. So this would be AB is congruent to BC. So again, congruent means they are the same. So let's say in our first example here, we have AB and C B being tangent to circle D, find the value of X. So we know they are tangent. They have the same exterior point. They meet at point B. Therefore, I can say the two are equal to each other. So X plus 15 is equal to 2X minus 5. Bring the smaller X over by subtracting. So we get 15 equals X minus 5. Add 5 to both sides. So we get 20 equals x. Pretty straightforward. And same with letter B here. Find the value of x. Assume segments that appear to be tangent are tangents. So here we have qr and rs. They appear to be tangent. They meet at point r, so they have the same exterior. So we can set these two equal to each other. So we can say 3x plus 8 equals 26. Solve for x, we subtract 8, so 3x equals 18, divide by 3, and x equals 6 in this case. And we would do the same thing for circle z. They, wx and xy, they meet at point x. I would set those two equal to each other and solve for x. Now, once in a while, you're going to meet, you're going to see what's known as circumscribed polygons. Circumscribed polygons is basically a circle within a shape, and the shape is tangent to the circle on all sides of said shape. So, notice circumscribed polygons. We have a circle within a triangle. All three sides of the triangle are tangent to the circle in some spot. We have a quadrilateral around the sec, around the second circle here. Notice each side of the quadrilateral is tangent to the circle in a spot. Same with the hexagon. The hexagon, each side is tangent to the circle. So we can use the fact that these different segments meet at a exterior point being tangent to the circle, which means each part is going to be congruent. So Again, here's the exterior point, meaning on that triangle, those two segments are going to be the same. I can use that to my advantage to figure out the perimeter of quadrilateral RSTU here. 
if it's circumscribed around circle J. We are told the perimeter is 18 units and we need to find X. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go around and mark up what I do know. So circumscribed, again, the theorem states if two lines are tangent and meet at the same exterior points, then the two segments are congruent. So if T to A is X, that means T to B is X. U to C is X, that means U to B is also X. D to R is three, that means R to C is also three. A to S is three, that means S to D is also three. So perimeter is how far around on the outside. So we got one, two, three, four X's, and we have three, six, nine, 12. And that gives me 18. Subtract 12. So we get 4x gives me 6. Divide by 4. And we get x equals 1.5 units, according to our measurement here. And that is tangents. Again, tangent, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to see if a line happens to be tangent as long as we know the radius and the two of the three sides. We can also use circumscribed polygons and the theorem about tangent, exterior tangents to find perimeters.